So recently I made a video where I talked about the new Doom Orb Mage start and compared that to the traditional starts with Mage's Blessing. In the comments of that video, somebody asked me if I could do the same thing for other classes, for other starts basically, and I would love to do that because I think it's a very interesting topic. Now here's the problem with that. Currently, with the exception of Tier 2 Transcendence, pretty much every start relies on a Blessing. If for any reason whatsoever you have about that, let's look at the most recent SPL games for support, for jungle, for ADC, where we at least see once that there was a little bit of variation in the build with a different start with Mage's Blessing on Ulr, and then at solo where we reach the peak of boring starts. Literally everyone is starting the exact same way. And to me, that is disappointing. It makes a lot of sense at the same time though, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We did actually have some changes recently that will also affect how we could work with Blessings, so we're going to talk about that too. So today's topic is, should we have Blessings in the way that they are right now? In that context, we will talk about these changes, we'll talk about what I think about Blessings in their current state, and we'll also take a look back at the old starter items that we used to have and see how they compare and how the situation with them was. So across the seasons, multiple things were done to simplify Smite. One of that, for example, was that relics would come for free and you would get a relic at level 1, which in my opinion was still a good change. I know that not everyone likes that, but I do think especially now with the amount of CC we have, not having free beat at the start of the game could be quite annoying and would just slow down the game unnecessarily. But one of the other changes that I never fully agreed with was the swap from starter items to blessings. But at the time it made sense. By giving every role one starter assigned to them, you would have a more simplified experience at the start of the game and that is something that MOBAs in general desperately need. A big problem of MOBAs is that many people don't want to touch them because there's too much of a learning curve. You have to invest too much time into the game itself before you can feel successful at all and therefore I can see why Hyrus had that idea of just making that start very very simple. I actually even argued back in the day that we should make it simpler and name the items after the role. Even though it doesn't sound quite as nice, I think a solo blessing would just be a bit more clear than somebody picking a warrior in support and thinking that they need warrior's blessing. But that's another story. We could also discuss if warrior's blessing in support is actually a reasonable choice at the moment. And the blessings in their current state work well. There is no reason not to pick up the blessing of your particular role, of your particular class, in the role that you're playing. Because it just is good enough. There's never going to be a situation where you're going to be like, okay, by picking up a blessing at the start of the game, I ruined the game for myself. It's simply not going to happen. There may sometimes be a better blessing or worse blessing, looking for example at Ulr where you can consider a major's blessing, but there's not going to be a situation where a blessing is wasted money. But there's a good reason why that's the case. And that's because in their current state, blessings are just too good not to build them. Or in other words, compared to every other item around that price range, they are too strong. Of course, with the exception of Mage's Blessing at the moment. And that wasn't even necessarily always the case for all of these Blessings, but when a Blessing was not performing well enough for a role, then the Blessing was changed in a way that made it work. So essentially, Blessings that were in their functionality not directly aligned with some guards were shoehorned on those guards by making them so strong that they would fit for every god in that role anyways. And the best example of that is Warrior's Blessing. Warrior's Blessing is just extremely strong so that you can put it on a defensive guardian in solo, you can put it on an ability-based warrior, and you can put it on a basic attack warrior. Considering how little these different types of characters actually share in terms of their kits, other than being tanky to some degree, I think this goes to show how effective Warrior's Blessing has to be to be the primary choice for all of them. That is also why the limitation to only being able to build a single blessing exists, because you could bet that otherwise supports would be running around with Guardian's Blessing plus Warrior's Blessing. You'd probably see a few assassins with a double blessing combo as well at least. But the question is, is that system as it is really necessary nowadays? Because blessings were a product of trying to help new players making things easier for them primarily. Since then we had a very relevant change to the game. And that is that all the recommended item trees were completely overhauled and are now done based on what people are building. Sure, they glitch out sometimes and you get some weird suggestions like Hunter's Blessing on Gap or something, 
But generally speaking, they do very much give you a good idea of which items are good. And I don't think they would fail in regards to any different variation of starter items. So for example, if a variation of Death Toll would return and everyone would be building it on Bellona, then you would very likely see that as the recommended item for Bellona in her build anyways. So new players wouldn't have to overthink things anyways, because they would just see, okay, everyone's building Death Toll on her, so there seems to be some sort of purpose for this. As such, I think blessings are a bit of an outdated construct and they also limit the potential for more unusual builds. Builds that don't rely on a blessing at the start of the game and go into more non-traditional paths like the Doom Orb path, which I think are a lot more interesting and I think it would allow more advanced, more experienced players to have a lot more variety in their playstyle while also being able to get a more significant advantage through strategic itemization. If everyone starts the same, then it doesn't really know what item knowledge you have. The first 5 to 10 minutes of the game will be almost the same anyways. And then sure, towards the end it'll change more, but I think that knowing how to build well should be something that should be rewarded. Of course I'm a little bit biased here as someone who likes to think about builds, but I think it's a fun thing to be able to do that, but still having a very easy, accessible, straightforward path if you don't want to do that, which would still be ensured through the recommended items. I also think that some of the old starter item combinations were actually really interesting. There was a game in the SPL where Refra actually ended up building four different starter items in support, which I thought was very, very interesting and funny as well. So I kind of liked those times just to see those janky playstyles as well. And the variation doesn't even necessarily have to come at the start of the game. We could even stick with the current starter blessings, but then have upgradable option path for them where you could then branch out into different directions depending on which character you have. It wouldn't really solve the thing of everyone starting out the same way, but at least there would be some more variety down the road before the game ends. I know that League of Legends has done this for quite some time and at least works there. Now, of course, another option would be to remove blessings and starter items from the game entirely and let everything play out. The big problem with that is that there are two roles where that's not really feasible and that is support on one hand and jungle on the other. With support, there would simply not be any way to not fall behind significantly. There are mechanics in place that already give you some more XP when you're last in XP and you're sharing with others, but still, you would be put at a disadvantage the second that you outlevel anyone else on the playing field for whatever reason, and that would then consecutively also put your team at a disadvantage if the enemy team still has their support getting bonus XP and actually sharing XP while the other person that's lower than them is not sharing XP on the other team. I think that a forced limitation here isn't necessarily bad though. Put a support starter or support general item into the game that purely works based on assists and that can only be bought by one person per team. If the stats are support focused, no other player has an incentive to build it if it revolves around assists. Especially if the gold bonus at later stages remains focused around assists and not gold per 5 seconds, there is very little reason even for solo laners to build it. For jungle it's more complicated as you have to keep in mind that removing any jungle blessing entirely would mean that everyone else can take jungle camps easier as well if you put the heal on the jungle camps for example. But there are solutions to that. You could for example have an objective similar to Totem of Ku to the base but one that doesn't really have to be claimed the same way but just activated by the jungler ever so often in order to get sustained from jungle camps and that only buffs the person that activates it. Again, sure, this is something that other people could take away, but then that's about as likely as other people taking away your normal buffs, like somebody taking the speed buff from the jungle or taking the blue buff from the solo. It normally shouldn't happen and normally people who do that get in trouble for it. But if we decide to keep starters in the game, let's have a look at what we actually had. For Mages, the first item that we had is Sense of Time, which was very close to Mages Blessing minus some extra damage, so not much worth discussing there. But then we also had Vampiric Shroud, a more sustained focused option that gave you healing for damaging enemies with abilities, which I always thought was a relatively interesting choice. It also had some extra health on top of that. Then there was also Soul Stone, which was supposed to be some kind of basic attack focus starter item to some degree because you use basics to stack it up and then dealt bonus damage with all abilities used afterwards. A little bit awkward in my opinion. Likewise there was Swift Wing for solo primarily which allowed you to go back from base to lane quicker by having increased movement speed 
But honestly, I think that one is better solved with the Travelers and Talaria nowadays, and Swiftwing in itself wasn't that interesting. Mark of the Vanguard was kind of a reduced version of Warrior's Blessing, really, that just gave you a little bit of health and physical protection, as well as reduced damage taken. And it was still bought back then. It reflects on how strong current blessings are, considering it was the same price back then, but Warrior's Blessing is just so much better than this. Death Toll was an interesting item because it was used across many roles, and when Bamba's Mask was cheaper, it was even used in jungle, which would give you some power and health, but also restore health whenever you hit an enemy, and also some mana along with that, with a reduced value if you had cleaves. Bluestone Pennon was a super massive starter relic that was back then specifically for physicals. It's kind of reflected in Mage's Blessing a little bit now, but Bluestone Pennon actually did 30 physical damage over 2 seconds, when you hit an enemy with an ability, and it had two stacks maximum as well. This was different as it was A, more damage, and B, it also allowed to, for example, counter stealth that way through the ticks of it. Warflag was a bit of an awkward starter for supports, which gave you a little bit of power, health, and MP5, and was supposed to be more aggressive support variation, which gave you a health restore and mana restore for getting an assist and then an increasing movement speed and attack speed buff along with that, but it was always weird because it relied on assists and aggressive so necessarily even want to rely on assists and it didn't have the extra gold that Watcher's Gift had, so it was a bit off. Speaking of Watcher's Gift, that was basically the old version of Guardian's Blessing, which didn't come with the gold per 5 seconds, which is I think a key difference between the two, so it was very much more assist focused. Bamba's Masked was the end of his lifetime was only 500 gold and it was the jungler item which ended up being built by almost everyone on the map because it was very strong in some stages. This item was good because it gave you so much extra damage against jungle camps and also it gave you the extra sustain from it. And it was cheaper for a reason because it allowed you to build other items along with it, which meant that junglers weren't forced to just start with a very boring item essentially. Ironically, in many ways, Bamba's Mask was actually better because it gave you a flat damage increase at the start of the game. It also gave you a 3% higher health restore and it came with 50 flat mana as well. Assassin's Blessing only recently even got health added to it. The only thing that you didn't get is an upgrade version where you get pen from stacks. So what you can see here is that some rolls got significant upgrades from their starter item form to their blessings form, especially in solo again whereas other roles actually didn't get that much of an upgrade at all. But what we can also see is that there was definitely more variety in the starters back then, with different utility added for different playstyles. And I personally much preferred that and I would like to see that return to Smite, or another variation that doesn't force us into the current relatively boring version of the Blessings. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below, and other than that, thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel free to the sub button and maybe the bell. The next video will now definitely be the what your warrior pick says about you, so if you want to see that, make sure you get a notification in one way or another. Now than that, thank you guys so much for watching, hope to see you all for the next one tomorrow. Duke Sloth, out.